first give an honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, my God and my Father, and the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To the angel of this house who's on the men, I'm so very good to see my brother here, because it would not be officers' day without him. Amen. I'm so very good to see him. I teased him, I told him my waist size, my suit size, and my shoe size have been the same since day one. Amen. So I'm easy to shop for. To my brother from another mother who I grew up with in ministry, uh, I call him the Bishop, Justin Rose. So very good to see you, my friend. Uh, to the ministers and officers and deacons of the Rising Sun Baptist Church. And to uh, no church would be the same in this Washington metro area without a Deacon Taylor or a Deacon Jones. Amen. So to our worship leader, Deacon Taylor, so very good to see you. And Deacon Taylor from Trinidad Baptist Church, so good to see you as well. Amen. I grew up watching him and his dad was a deacon to all the deacons of the Trinidad Baptist Church, so very glad to see you. I'm going to have to take a bow tie off of somebody. So please don't go to see a deacon player. Thank you, Lord God, for each year, but especially this year, God. Speak to your servant through me, Lord God. 
God's life. Expound on this word that your people will see all of you and none of me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We've often heard it said that there was strength in numbers. If you have a large army of soldiers, you feel strong because of the numbers. If your navy has a large number of fighting ships, you feel you're strong because of the numbers. If an individual has a large number of followers on Facebook, they feel well liked because of the numbers. If a married couple has a large number of attendees at the wedding, you sure enough gonna get some good gifts. <laughs> if a ministry has a large number of members, it is effective. All based on numbers. Can I be carnal for a moment? And this came to me while I was sitting there. You can't be regarded as a true believer unless you have the numbers to prove it. You can't be the hot new girl if you don't have the men chasing you. Large number of people make us feel alive, vibrant, useful, and special. Let me say this in the presence of Reverend Harad. Uh, when I first started uh, working with Reverend Swanson, I was doing my field education study at Craig, and we had a meeting, I believe it was a Friday night. And so I went to the fellowship hall to wait for him to come out of the office, and I was sitting right outside of the conference room. And I was overheard people praying in the conference room. And, I mean, you could really feel the presence of God coming out of that room. And, and it was loud, and it was prayerful, and it was profound, and I mean, speaking in tongues, and all this stuff was going on in this back room. And I said, man, there's got to be a serious amount of people in there praying. And you could feel the presence of God literally inside that room. About 10 minutes later, the door opened up. Reverend Kennedy, Reverend Rod walked out. <laughs> and I'm waiting for everybody else to come out of the room. I said, there's got to be at least 10 people in there. And Reverend Candy doubled back and turned the light out. And I said, it was, it was just the two of y'all. Oh, no, Pastor, you wait. Reverend Walker, it was just the two of us. And I said to myself, with that kind of anointing and that kind of power that was in that room, it had to be more than two. Come on now. But then the verse came to me where two or three I gathered in my name. That I will be also. Yeah. Numbers are impressive and numbers are mighty. Numbers are awesome. And when we have stadiums and athletic events, we say, ooh, there's a large number of people. Yes, that was a game. And church services with thousands of people and followers on Facebook and Twitter and social media really makes people feel good. But what if there's only a few? Mm -hmm. Only a few in number. What does what can that really really do? And I ask myself also, uh, Reverend Justin, is God really impressed with numbers, or is He impressed with a few that are all on one accord? If one can chase a thousand and two can chase ten thousand, does God really need a large multitude of people to do what He needs to get done? I believe if there's two or three that are focused on him and they come together with him in mind, it's greater than a thousand people who are superficial and just ready for the new pastor to say the benediction. He can do more with 10 sold out Christians than he can do with 10,000 who are only fulfilling a religious duty. Numbers. Can't wait for brunch to start. And you say, I went to church. We had church today. Uh, what time is it? What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? Pastor, hurry up. I got a date. I got something I got to do. And does that really mean you went to church at all? Did he really get the victory in your life? And did he really show himself mighty if all we gathered for was for form or for fashion and for ritual? I ask myself that question often because it seems like, Pastor Mitchell, if you have 20 demons, you really only have five. <laughs> the others are going to make excuses, just wear the title, and some are going to show up whenever they feel like it. But if you've got three good ones, you really got something. I know you're saying, Pastor, you're just saying that because he might only have a few, but he has a few good ones. It's better than 20. Reminds me of uh, my favorite movie, 300, but we'll get that one in a minute. But 
victory comes from the Lord, and it doesn't really matter what size the army is. If God is going to grant you the victory, you can go in there with two brothers and handle business. Right. Right. Amen. As we get to our scripture, the first one in Judges, we see the Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men for me to deliver me and into your hands and in order for Israel may not boast against me that her own strength has saved her. Yeah. I'm saying what God is saying here now. He's saying here that yes, if Israel had 30,000 men, they would think that they won because of their numbers. They would feel like they were successful because they had a huge fighting force and God recognized and realized they won't give me the glory because they glorify in their number. Hmm. Announce now that to the people that anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave from Mount Gilead. Can I stop right there? If you're scared, you're scared. If you're you're no good for anybody if you're scared now. This I know fear will always be present, but uh confidence and our, our faith in God overcomes fear. But if we're scared, we're not good for anything. Somebody ought to say amen. Yeah. So those who were scared were 22,000. They left to return home because they were scared. And God knew they were scared. And he said they were scared when they see the army. They may be fearful of the task because yet they have numbers. But some of you are scared. How many people will come forward and volunteer to be an officer in a Baptist church if they're scared? Scared of criticism and scared of standing out and scared of their ideas not being heard. So they do what most folk do in church. Don't look around. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> most folk do in church. They just talk about you but don't do anything. Look at her. She thinks she's so suchy much with that hat. She can't have prayer. Her, her prayers don't make no sense. I know God didn't hear that. But yet she had the courage to step forward to do something for the Lord. More so than the gossipers and the naysayers. Numbers. God needs mighty men and women who are not fearful and sit around and are afraid to do anything. God needs somebody who's going to step up for him and stand for him and lead God's people. He needs somebody in the church, even though it's only a few folks. He only needs a couple who are going to be sold out for him. Amen. But the Lord said to get in there, there's still, still too many men. Take them down to the water and I'll sit them for you there. And if I say one should go, he should go. But if I if he shall go, but if I say the one shall not go with you, he shall not go. Yeah. So Gideon took the men down to the water and there separate those who lap with the water with their tongues like a dog from those who kneel down to drink. I don't know about you, but I never lap, put my face in the water to drink. I always cut my hands. Amen. Yeah. Even under the faucet, you cup your hands. But these, these guys just put their face right in the water, just like a little poodle. <laughs> Dove them and pinch it, whatever you please. He, he lapped them like a dog. And he only had 300 men left over who drank appropriately. Isn't that interesting? It reminds me of the movie 300, where King Leonidas took 300 out to go against the Persian army, and it lasted for a few days. He didn't take the whole army of uh, Spartans. He just took the moral guard and was able to hold them all for a couple of days. And even looking at this passage of scripture reminds us of that, that God doesn't need a whole lot of folk to do what he needs to get done. He just needs someone who is available for his use. Lord said to me, with these 300 men that have lapped up, I will save for you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the other men go, each to his own place. I don't know about you, but if I was a man, I'd feel kind of funny. Maybe I'd be slightly relieved that I didn't have to die for the cause. I can go back home and hug the wife. What happened? I got laid off. <laughs> Maybe I got laid off. I, I'm sorry. He didn't need me. So, you know, like jury duty, they don't need you. You're good for three more years. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. So God, as we find out in chapter 9, he was going to give them the victory. It wasn't the size of the army. It wasn't the tools. It wasn't the spears. It wasn't the swords. It wasn't the shield. It was God that was going to give them the victory. And it had nothing to do with their numbers. Get down 
go down against the camp because I'm going to give it into your hands. And you can imagine, it didn't matter how many Midianite soldiers there were, God was on their side. It didn't matter if the Midianites had forces and their formations were superior or they had superior weaponry, God was going to give them the victory. I'm telling you today, that doesn't matter how big the task is. It doesn't matter how many people come and go. It doesn't matter. It matters who's available for God to you. Matthew chapter 18. I'm going to start with verse number 18, if I will, to clarify something. It says in verse number 18, I tell you the truth, uh, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And we bind a lot of things because we misunderstand the scripture. A lot of times we say we bind fear, and then two minutes later we get scared. We say we bind corruption, and the government's corrupt. We buy an indifference, and six months later, there's indifference. What he's speaking of here is spirits and ideologies. It's contrary things that lose peace and love, and we use these things, but the commentators believe it refers to church discipline, that if you don't allow something in the church, it won't be allowed in heaven. If you don't, if you don't, you lose love in the church, then God will honor the love, but you have the responsibility of letting love abide in the sanctuary. Now he skips on down to verse number 19 and says, I tell you that if two or three on earth agree about anything you ask for, it'll be done by my Father in heaven. It means that if two deacons agree that we're going to feed the homeless and we're going to go out and serve the Lord like never before, that is going to happen. If two members agree that we're going to go out and we're going to do things better than we did last year, it will happen. If two agree that in sickness, we're going to visit the sick and we're going to commute the sick, it's going to happen because you said so. And because it lines up with God's will, there's so much power in two people, but first they have to agree. And you know in the church that's, that's difficult. Can't even agree what color to wear for the anniversary. Can't agree where the banquet celebration is going to be. Can't, can't agree on what shoes the men are going to wear and what ties they're going to wear and how dare he think he's going to have his way. We, we did that last year. It's amazing if you can get just two Negroes to work. <laughs> you got something Jesus. in your ministry. Amen. We're going to wear blue blouses. What shade of blue? Light blue, medium blue, navy blue, heaven. What, what, what shade we going to wear? And what else? Should we, we wear blue shoes or white shoes or green shoes? I'm glad I'm not a woman in the church. <laughs> Man, we only got four choices. Yeah. Blue, yeah. black, yeah. gray, and brown. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. What suit we going to wear, fellas? Blue. Blue, <laughs> black, gray, or brown. Amen. Yeah. What shade of gray? Don't matter. Dark, 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 dark. What shade of black? Don't matter. Just black. What shade of blue? Come on, man. Navy. Blue. Yeah. It's easy. Blue. Amen. Yeah. Sister's got too many choices. <laughs> Well, do we wear suits or a dress with a jacket? Is it going to be above the knee or below the knee? Do we wear flats or heels? Should we wear blue hats, white hats, or a combination? I, 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 I. It's lovely when sisters agree, though. They all look wonderful in their attire and everything. But you know, one of them didn't agree. Yeah. Two of them talked about the one that didn't agree. And all of them wasn't gonna put that person out of the ministry next year. But if two or three agree, it says something about us that we decided within ourselves that this is what we are going to do. And this is what we're gonna do to give God glory. And it will happen because the agree. Yeah. Concerning anything on earth, and it's power when people are in agreement. It's, it's power when people can sit down and decide that we're gonna what we're gonna do for Christ is the only thing that's gonna last. So no more bickering and no more infighting and no more arguing and no more debate. We're gonna do whatever it is that the Spirit leads us to do. He only needs two or three. 
Because when you add more numbers, you add controversy. When you add more numbers, you add more opinions. When you add more numbers, you add more laziness. Add more numbers, add more indifference, add more numbers, lack of cooperation, add more numbers, and nobody's going to be focused on what they should focus on. But if two or three are gathered in his name, says if two or three come together in my name, then I am with them. I'm going to tell you about an experience that we had uh, a couple of, back, back last couple of Sundays where worship was so so great. It was it was awesome. Everybody was was shouting and, and singing and having this good old fashioned country church good time. And it was a wonderful experience. Yet you wonder how all those people that were there and the few of us that were gathered worshiping and having a great time. God was pleased because it seemed like he just stepped into the auditorium and, and began to bless us. And it was the first night of revival, but it was a Thursday night where, you know, everybody don't want to get wet with one time during baptism. So it was only a few people that showed up. But it was one of the best revival services we had because God was in the building. And if he's in the building, he's all we need. Yes, we look around and see empty pews and empty seats and, and empty choir stand. But when God was in the building, man, it was a great time. When God showed up and began to manifest himself, it was an awesome time. And everybody comes back that next day. What happened last night? Oh, I wish I would have been here, but my, my hand was hurt. <laughs> my baby toe had a corn on it. I couldn't, I couldn't get in one of the shoes I wanted to wear. And there was a spot on my black suit and I couldn't wear it. And you know I'm kind of hurting up because every time it rains, yes. that old knee injury when I got hit by Jimmy Lee in the knee in the basketball in junior high school. You, you remember we were playing baseball that baseball hit me in the knee and my knee been hurting ever since. Every time it rains. And I hear the word Jimmy and Lee, my knee, my knee starts acting up. And my shoulder, you know, I used to whoop my children. I, I threw it out, whooped my oldest. And it ain't been the same since. <laughs> Yet that shoulder didn't hurt when you went to the mall to buy those clothes. And that shoulder didn't hurt when you were buying that Powerball ticket the other day. And that shoulder didn't hurt when... When you were doing what you wanted to do when they had that bus trip to New York to watch the play and eat at that fine restaurant. Your shoulder was fine. When it comes to serving the Lord, all of a sudden your, your aches and pains, they, they bother you. And you know I'm hurting up and you know, so he don't need no folk like that because if they're not dedicated and they're not serving him, they're not praying to him, if they're not willing to serve, they yeah. yeah. I'm almost done here now. So as we look at the complexity of officers day, Pastor Mitchell, you are blessed because you have officers that will participate and you are blessed because you have trustees that will come out and you are blessed because you have deaconess that will support their husbands and support the church. You are blessed because you have somebody who will follow the Lord as they pray. As you follow Christ, they follow you, but they serve the Lord because they love him. Amen. And you might think to yourself, I need great numbers, and I need more of this, and I need more of that, and I need more deacons, and I need more choir members. And yes, you need that, but you need the dedication that comes with it. Yeah. The most dedicated people are in the choir. Not the best singers, not the most anointed singers, and they don't have the best voices. But the individuals that come out to sing are the most dedicated because they come to choir rehearsal when only four people show up, and they sing when only two people show up, and even though it's raining and snow outside, having service, I'm on my way. The best choir members are those who come out regardless of the day. Not the ones who come for the anniversaries and pastor's anniversaries and special days when they'll be seen and wear a corsage and have on the right anointed colors and everything else. And, and the most dedicated ones are to come regardless. 
The most dedicated deacons are the ones that show up at the hospital and show up at pastor's house. And is there anything you need me to do? Pastor, is there anything you need me to take care of? Pastor, don't take care of that. I can handle that for you. Let me open the door. Let me park your car. Let me serve you as I'm serving God because it's what he called me to do. You don't need but two or three really sold out individuals that will say I'm going to serve the Lord until I can't serve him no more. If all I can do is sit at home, I'm going to call somebody and share the love of Jesus with them even though I can't get out of my seat. Right. Amen. 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 That's what he's looking for. Amen. Two or three that get together in his name and, and not focus on the numbers. Pastor, we don't have but so what? We're going to do it anyway. And we don't have we don't have community day but only four people showed up. So what? We're going to have community day anyway. We we're going to feed the homeless, but it's only four of us. So what? We're going to do it anyway because we don't care about the numbers long as God is with us. We get hung up on numbers. But what really are numbers? Just a smattering of people that decided it was sunny enough to come to church. I'm not saying on nobody's toes. I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> <laughs> but if God didn't say in his word, and especially the pastor's scripture when he speaks, and he didn't say when it was two or three thousand. Yeah. He didn't say two or three hundred. Right. Right. Yeah. Because God can do what God needs to do if he only has four or five people that people don't think that, oh, he's going to show up because there's 20,000 of us. No, he may not show up at all. Amen. Amen. Because you think Amen. he's obligated to move because of your numbers. Amen. And as we learn in Judges, never trust numbers. That's right. Trust in the Lord. Yeah. Never trust in your 12,000, your 20,000, or your 40,000. Matter of fact, never trust the money in your bank account. Oh, that's right. oh I got 20,000 saved up, and it still may not be enough. And I got 30,000 saved up, and you could be in an accident and lose every dollar you had. So don't get comfortable with your numbers. Amen. Oh, we got 20,000. We got 1,200 in the choir. We got this and we got that. And half of them don't even sing. Amen. Loud the song. Preach. <laughs> and 60 of them are singing. And the other 60. <laughs> I was in a big choir. I know people are loud. I'm sorry. I didn't happen to be one of them, but I know people were loud the song. Because as long as someone with the anointed, dedicated voices are singing, they can just relax and do nothing. Don't even sing all the words because they're not dedicated. And we get hung up on numbers nowadays with, with this how many we have and that's how many we have. But the real what God is really looking at, what he really wants to see, what he really wants to honor, and when he really shows up is when everybody has him in mind and not their clothes and not their colors, and not their numbers, and not the carpet, and not their Holy Ghost anointed seat, and not their place, and not their title, and not their position, but they're all focused on the Lord. So if you really want to be blessed, if you really want God to show up, if you really, really want him to do something amazing in your ministry, if you really want God to be God and to come up and fill his house, if you really want him to feed and to deliver and to set free and to heal, all you need to do is gather in yeah. his name. Yeah. And don't worry about the numbers.
may be two or three who aren't saved. There may be two or three that don't have a church home. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, recognized and realized that gathering in his name was the most important thing. And there's going to come a day where everybody who's called according to his name, he's going to reward by bringing them to glory. And it won't necessarily be a large number, but we want to be one in the number. Amen. So if you're here today and you're unsaved, out of the ark of safety, you can be in that number. The most important number that there's going to be for all of eternity are those who inherit the kingdom of God. It won't be the numbers. It won't be the fans. It won't be the residents. It won't be how many people live in your county and your zip code. It'll be if you are one in the number in the kingdom of God. So if you're here today and you're out of the ark of safety, you're not saved, you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, we ask you to come. If you're here today, Rising Sun is a wonderful church. They have a wonderful pastor. And they have wonderful people that will love you. If you're here without a church home, we ask you to come. Or perhaps you got to know Jesus Christ. You guys were, were tight. You were one in the number, but you... Things got a little hairy for you and the world called you back out and it was more, more alluring to be out there than it is to be in here. But you feel the Spirit of God is moving on your heart. We ask you to come. Yeah. If you're unsaved, unchurched, or outside the ark of safety, we ask you to come. Yeah. If you're here and you're in a backslidden state, we ask you to come. Because we all want to be one in that number on that great day when he cracks the sky and calls us home. Yeah. Is there one on today? Is there one?